Nice blouse, Lois. <laughs> yes, I was going to say, I'm all dressed up today. Good morning. Please join me with our personal meditation as we open our hearts to receive God's word today. Before the death of Abraham is reported, the beautiful story of the acquisition of a bride for Isaac is told. As Abram had left the land of his birth, so Rebekah was called to leave her father's house to go the way of Abraham. This cycle, the heart of the book of Genesis, covers a crucial part of the story of the patriarchs. The promises that Abram received as he was called out of Ur, pertaining to offspring and land, challenged his faith. Sometimes he acted as if he had lost that faith, but his God did not abandon him. The story of the generations continued. Listen now to our prelude. Good morning and welcome as we begin the week of our 4th of July celebration. It's so nice to see all of you here today, even though it's a bit muggy, think cool. Please join me now in our call to worship. For the beauty of human love. Brother, sister, parent, child. Friends on earth and friends above. For all gentle thoughts and mild. Lord of all, to thee we raise. This our, our hymn, hymn of grateful praise. We come to you today, Lord, to, to offer, offer our thanks, thanks for, for all you, you do. do. Our first hymn is number 455. We're singing verses 1, 3, and 6. All creatures of God are king. Please stand if you are able. Sing, Alleluia. 
it's in God alone that we find our true north, our true purpose. God already knows the ways we've messed up and walked away from God's path for us. We confess not to surprise God, but to be honest with ourselves. Let us confess our sins first in unison and then in the silence of our hearts. Faithful God, you never quit on us. You are always near. Despite our humanness, you work in us to fulfill your good purposes. We seek your face, O God, but sometimes we get in our own way. We grumble and complain and lose sight of the greater things. We argue and turn our focus inward instead of looking to you. We're self-reliant and we grow weary. Help us to stand firm so that we don't run in vain. Forgive us our faults and our warped ways. Remove our stump or shortcoming so we machine among those we meet. Who is in position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns for us. Christ prays for us. Everyone who is in Christ is a new creation. Our old lives are gone and our new lives have begun. Know that you've been forgiven and be at peace because friends, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please stand as you are able, embody your spirit to join in the Gloria Patri this morning. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Having heard the truth that in Christ we have been made new, we have been washed clean, and with this we can find true peace, let us share a sign of Christ's peace with one another. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Also, please share a sign of Christ's peace with your neighbors. As we continue to greet one another, I do invite the kids forward. Before we begin our official children's time, I just want to congratulate Heath for winning a great bet. If you know Rich, <laughs> if you know Rich, you know he lost. There we go. So today we're continuing in Genesis, and uh, I'm going to read a paraphrase of the story that we'll hear later in the service. Y'all ready? <clears throat> How do you welcome guests at your home? Do you invite them to sit down? Do you offer them something to drink or eat? So let's listen for how Rebecca and her family welcomed a stranger. Ready? Rebecca lived with her family in a city. Each night before dinner, it was her job to get water from the city well. One night, Rebecca went to the well with other women from the city. She carried a big water jug on her shoulders. 
After she filled the jar with water, she saw a stranger praying to God. The man looked up from his prayer and saw Rebecca. Please, he asked, may I have a sip of your water? Of course, said Rebecca kindly. Drink all you want, and I will go and get water for your camels too. Rebecca ran back to the well. She filled her jar again and again until every animal had water. Then Rebecca invited the stranger to join her family for dinner. Before they ate, the man said, I have something amazing to tell you. I work for a man called Abraham. He is part of your family. Abraham and his wife Sarah follow God far from here. When they were very old, they had a baby named Isaac. Now Isaac is all grown up. Abraham sent me here to find someone for Isaac to marry. I was asking for God's help at the well. That's when I saw Rebecca. I knew that she was the one for Isaac. Rebecca's family thought about how far away Rebecca would be if she agreed to marry Isaac. But Rebecca's family felt God tugging at their hearts. They agreed that God was calling Rebecca to marry Isaac. The man begged the family to send Rebecca with him the very next day. Rebecca's family said, this is a big decision and only Rebecca can decide. So they called Rebecca and asked her, do you want to go with this man? Do you want to marry Isaac? Rebecca thought about the journey she would take. Rebecca wondered what the man called Isaac was like. But Rebecca felt God tugging at her heart. She said, yes, I will go. Early the next morning, Rebecca began her long journey to her new home. She was riding a camel when she saw a man walking in the fields. Who is that man, she asked. That man is Isaac. The man who worked for Abraham introduced Rebecca and to Isaac. Then he told Isaac everything that had happened. Isaac married Rebecca, and he loved her. Rebecca was glad God had tugged on her heart. She loved Isaac. They comforted each other when they were sad. They cared for each other as they grew old. So that's the story of Rebecca and Isaac. And they're the couple in the family we're looking at today, Isaac and Rebecca. So with that, let's pray. Dear God, we thank you that you give us so much. Help us to give to others as we've been blessed by you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. And now choir, please come forward.
Thank you, choir. That was awesome. I always enjoy having you sing for us. It's just awesome. Thank you so much. Please join me now in our prayer for illumination. God of all creation, just as you gave guidance and promises to the key family in Genesis, you do the same for us today through scripture. Help us today and every day to listen with open ears and hearts as we read your holy word. In and through Christ we pray. Amen. Our, our first reading today comes from Genesis chapter 24, verses 1 through 9, and it can be found on page 16 in the Pew Bible, if you care to read along with us. Now Abraham was old, well advanced in years, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. Abraham said to his servant, the oldest of his house, who had charge of all that he had, Put your hand under my thigh, and I will make you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and earth, that you will not get a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I live, but will go to my country and to my kindred and get a wife for my son Isaac. The servant said to him, Perhaps the woman may not be willing to follow me to this land. Must I then take your son back to the land from which you came? Abraham said to him, See to it that you do not take my son back there. The Lord, the God of heaven, who took me from my father's house and from the land of my birth, and who spoke to me and swore to me, to your offspring I will give this land. He will send his angel before you, and you shall take a wife for my son from there. But if the woman is not willing to follow you, then you will be free from this oath of mine, only you must not take my son back there. So the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham, his master, and swore to him concerning this matter. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading today comes from Genesis chapter 24, verses 50 through 67. And this is on page 18, just a couple pages. And now you may have noticed this is the same chapter, right? the beginning of chapter 24 and the end of chapter 24. So between these two passages, the servant of Abraham goes on this journey to find a wife for Isaac, and God leads him to Rebekah. And so now this servant is telling the brother, which is Laban, and the mother, which is Bethuel, of Rebekah about his mission from Abraham, right? So Rebekah's brother and mom are the people you'll hear at the very beginning. And so the servant is telling them about his mission from Abraham to find his son Isaac a wife. So that's a quick synopsis of what we've jumped over to get to now, verse 50. So please let us listen to what the Spirit is saying to us today through Scripture. Then Laban and Bethuel answered, The thing comes from the Lord. We cannot speak to you anything bad or good. Look, Rebekah is before you. Take her and go, and let her be the wife of your master's son, as the Lord has spoken. When Abraham's servant heard their words, he bowed himself to the ground before the Lord. And the servant brought out jewelry of silver and gold and garments and gave them to Rebekah. He also gave to her brother and her mother costly ornaments. Then he and the men who were with him ate and drank, and they spent the night there. Then they rose in the morning... When they rose in the morning, he said, send me back to my master. Her brother and her mother said, let the young woman remain with us a while, at least ten days. After that, she may go. But the servant said to them, do not delay me, since the Lord has made my journey successful. Let me go that I may go to my master. They said, we will call the young woman and ask her. And they called Rebekah and said to her, will you go with this man? She said, I will. So they sent away their sister Rebecca and her nurse, along with Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebecca and said to her, May you, our sister, become thousands of myriads. May your offspring gain possession of the gates of their foes. Then Rebecca and her maids rose up, mounted the camels, and followed the man. And the servant took Rebecca and went his way. Now Isaac had come from Ber Lahai Roy and was settled in the Negev. Isaac went out in the evening to walk in the field, and, looking up, he saw camels coming. And Rebekah looked up, 
And when she saw Isaac, she slipped quickly from the camel and said to the servant, Who is that man over there walking in the field to meet us? The servant said, It is my master. So she took her veil and covered herself, and the servant told Isaac all the things he had done. Then Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent. He took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. So Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. God, we thank you that as we come to this time of scripture today, we come knowing that you fulfill your promises that you make. Help us to be open and willing to find that fulfillment and to be stepping stones to helping other people's hopes, and promises be filled as well. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We've made it to the halfway point in our sermon series on Genesis. This is the fifth sermon out of nine sermons. So we're literally halfway through this series. But let's walk through where we've traveled along this path of Genesis and the main family that becomes the Israelites. We started the same place the Bible does, with creation. And we looked at the intimacy God had in mind when God created humanity. Then we looked at God's act of renewal in the story of Noah's family and the flood. Plus, God's promise to never flood the world like that again. In the third week of the series, we finally made it to the first patriarch and matriarch of Genesis, Abram and Sarai. We explored their calling away from Abram's family and to go wherever God called them, which happened to be the land of Canaan. But with this calling, they had one big missing piece, children. And in last week's sermon, we read how God gave them a son, Isaac, and that God remains true to God's promises. And as part of this gift of a son, God also changed their names to Abraham and Sarah. Which brings us to today. Isaac isn't given as much screen time as his father or his son. So there isn't a much information to share about him that's not overlapping with someone else. The authors and editors of Genesis seem to be more focused on getting from Abraham to Jacob, who we'll meet next week. In fact, if you noticed in both the readings we have for today, Isaac's parents are mentioned. In verses 1 through 9, Abraham is the main character, as he tells his servant to go and get a bride for Isaac. Isaac's not mentioned. Isaac isn't speaking. We have no idea what Isaac wants, right? But we know what Abraham wants. And then in verses 50 through 67, we hear Sarah mentioned through the use of her tent and pointing out that she died. Isaac's story, especially while his father is alive, is very much tied to his parents. And then once his twin sons are born, Esau and Jacob, the story focuses more on their twin rivalry and then on Jacob's lineage. Isaac is the cherished and promised son that Abraham and Sarah had maybe even given up praying for, right? But yet he's the fulfillment of a lifelong marriage and companionship. And so, with this fulfillment, they want to see that lineage continued. A fascinating thing is, to me, that Abraham is adamant that his servant goes back to Haran, where Abraham left his father behind. They'd all lived in Ur, and then Abraham with his father moved to Haran, and then Abraham left Haran to follow God's call to head down into Canaan. So, Abraham sent his servant back to Haran to find a wife for Isaac. The servant wasn't sure, right, about this whole endeavor, 
but listens to Abraham's command. Authors Martin Kessler and Carl Derelieu write this, quote, Time was pressing for Abraham, for he was old, and Sarah had already died. The blessing by which Abraham was blessed must continue in his seed after him. He asked his servant manager to swear an oath to him that he would not take a wife for Isaac from the daughters of the Canaanites. Abraham remembered the moment of his call, the imperative, go out of the land you were born. That was where the servant must go to recruit a bride so that she might go the same route Abraham went with Sarah. But what if the woman would not follow him, the servant reacted. Must he then, for family reasons, take the son back to the land where Abraham came from? Not at all. That would undo the entire history of Abraham. It would break the inextricable connection between the son, Isaac, and the land. End quote. So Abraham's dream has been fulfilled, right, in one sense. And yet in another sense, it hasn't. Because the next generation hasn't been secured. And he's feeling this crunch of time. Isaac needs a wife and then to have children of his own. And so the servant leaves Abraham and heads northwest. No, northeast. I'm sorry, heads northeast to find some familial connection to Abraham. God leads the way and things do work out. In the verses I jumped over in this chapter, the servant finds Rebecca collecting water after he prays to God and asking for a certain set of things to happen. And all these things do happen. And so the servant knows Rebecca is the one to marry Isaac, his master's son. So he approaches her and tells her about his mission to find a wife for Isaac. Rebecca then runs to tell her mother and her brother what happened at the... No, she runs to tell them, right? Her mother and her brother, Laban. Laban then goes to meet this servant, and they set up the agreement for Rebekah to marry Isaac. As part of this agreement, the servant recaps exactly what happened at the watering hole, which is where our second reading for today picks up. Rebekah's brother and mother formally agree to the marriage, and then they try to keep Rebekah around for longer, but end up not doing that because she gets the chance to speak for herself. And this is one of my favorite things about this chapter, that Rebecca is asked her opinion, her thoughts, and then what she wants is followed. We don't often think of women being empowered in the ancient world, but we get the sense that, at least in this family, at this moment in time, there's recognition of what a woman may want in deciding matters that are about her. And with this opportunity to say yes, to go with the servant to get married immediately, rather than waiting for some time to pass, this means the larger fulfillment of God's promise to Abraham is coming closer to fruition. Abraham's lineage can and will continue through Isaac and his wife, Rebekah. We don't get a ton of information about their relationship here. Just that Rebecca sees Isaac for the first time from their camel caravan. And after she sees him, she puts a veil on to cover herself, which was just a traditional custom of the time for a bride to be obscured before her marriage. And then once the servant has told Isaac what happened, Isaac marries Rebecca. And we're told this with a great verse. Okay, here's verse 67 in the CEB translation. Isaac brought Rebekah to his mother's tent. He received Rebekah as his wife and loved her. So Isaac found comfort after his mother's death. There's not much there, but we learn enough to know that there's love between them. And beautiful enough, this is one of my favorite fun facts about Isaac and Rebekah, they are the only patriarch and matriarch couple that doesn't have another wife or concubine in the marriage. It's just Isaac and Rebecca 
the whole time. So I do think that they did love each other. Even though some rocky things come up later, once their boys had grown up and become young men, they had this foundation of fulfillment of God's promise to Abraham. Even though Isaac and Rebekah don't get a lot of time on their own, they play a key role in this story to connect the beginning of the relationship God has with a single person to having God be in relationship with a large family, which is in the next generation, to an entire people group. Isaac is needed to keep this dream, this hope, this promise alive. This dream that can be hard to hold on to because hope can be hard to find, right, when the deepest hopes and dreams seem to be coming up empty. Isaac is a beacon of hope to Abraham and Sarah, and his marriage to Rebekah shows the fulfillment of God's connection and promise and care. It shows God's faithfulness and trustworthiness. Things we can trust about God, too. We can see from our series so far that the story of God's connection with humanity through this family continues to move forward. There are hiccups and pauses on the way to establishing God's promises, and yet God always pulls through. And the same is true for us and the stories of our lives, too. We have hiccups and bumps along the road. We have detours and reroutes on the road of life, but we can be sure that we have the best GPS around, that we have God in our lives. And when we trust God will provide and will support us, the fear and anxiety can be easier to manage and work through. We see in scripture that God will fulfill the promises God made to us. The hardest thing to know and trust is what are God's promises to us? How can we be certain that the things we want is the, in like the deepest recesses of our souls are promises from God? Well, we can't know for sure. Part of having faith is having nuggets of uncertainty. Like Abraham's servant who went on this mission to find a bride for Isaac, which likely took him months of traveling through less than ideal conditions, he did this without knowing for certain if he'd be successful on this mission. He doubts a woman would want to travel with him without meeting her designated husband for, beforehand. Abraham feels certain of this journey, but the servant doesn't. There's a seed of doubt that ends up not coming to fruition, right? Because Rebecca says yes. And faith is like that. We have faith in God's love and mercy, support and care. And so when we're going through difficult and challenging times, even if we have a mountain of doubt, we remember that even a kernel, a mustard seed of faith can keep us going. Jesus said in Matthew 17, verse 20, that faith the size of a mustard seed can move a mountain. So when we're waiting on the fulfillment of a hope we have, our faith can keep us moving forward on uncertain paths. And if what we hope for doesn't come to fruition, our faith can help keep us supported even as the other things come tumbling down. Just like for Isaac, in his grief over the death of his mom, he marries Rebecca, and he finds comfort from her. When God fulfills our hopes and dreams, things may be different than how we'd want them or dream them. And yet God's way is the best way. God's guidance takes us on the right path for our flourishing and our development. In Isaac and Rebekah, we see the fulfillment of God's promise to Abraham to have more descendants than he could ever count. And when we come back next week, we'll see how that next generation, how the twins Esau and Jacob struggle against one another, and how God uses them to continue laying the foundation of the people of Israel, God's chosen people and our faith forebearers as we continue this journey through Genesis. 
may we continue to see the ways our lives can be reflected and influenced by these long ago people and their stories. Amen. Our next song is Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. Please stand as you are able in body or spirit to join in our song today. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but our faith with the Apostles' Creed found in your bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. 
The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from whence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. It's the time in our service where we share our joys and concerns. And we'll start in the congregation. Joanne. Prayers for Rachel as she is in the hospital. Maybe she has delivered her firstborn, and maybe not. But prayers for her, her family, and the doctors who are with her. God of mercy, hear our prayers. Um, I'd like to announce the joy of our of our granddaughter being born her, to our daughter and son-in-law. Her name is Fallon Carrie Matos, and uh, she was in the NICU for about a week in Morristown, and she's home now, so um, we're very excited. Congratulations. That's exciting news. God in mercy, hear our prayers. Donna. <clears throat> I have a concern. Oh. Uh, one of my teammates' daughters, uh, her name is Carly. She has a very rare uh, skin disease. It's called uh, Steven Johnson syndrome. And what it, she has it from her feet right up to her head. Uh, the best way I can describe it is it almost looks like blue ink tattoos, and, and it just covers her whole body. Uh, but very, very rare. So if you could uh, please, please play for Carly and, uh, and her parents, I would really appreciate it. Thank you. God of mercy, mercy, hear our, our prayers. prayers. We have Donna over here, Eric. Uh, wait, where was I going? I'm sorry. Oh, Donna. Uh, yes, uh, Friday I received word that my very good friend Carol Mullen passed away. So, prayers for her family. Thank you. God of mercy, hear our prayers. I have one also. Um, a concerned a dear colleague of ours, Marilyn Pasillo, uh, taught right across the hall from me for many years, passed away this week. Um, not quite sure what happened. Uh, but at any rate, she uh, passed away this week. So prayers for Marilyn Pasillo and her family. May she rest in peace. God of mercy, hear our prayers. Are there any on Zoom, Eric? Um, it's not looking like it. I'll, uh, I'll just add one as well. Though. I'll uh, ask for continued prayers for uh, Matt Vincent, who has a rare... Um, nerve disorder i guess it's triggered by like a viral infection or some kind of infection so he is uh still in marstown uh, uh hospital and i guess does not have use of his legs and arms still Ooh. so prayers for him god and his mercy. family god of mercy hear our prayers are there any others With these things shared, would you please join your hearts with mine in prayer? Great God, you're the foundation of our lives. You show us the way to live our best lives, and you fulfill the hopes of our hearts that help us to live into your kingdom here on earth. As we pray for other people today, help us to pray more and more in all we do. Creator God, we pray for this earth you created, it's a gift given to us that we often take for granted. We pray for the people impacted by the summer storms, thunderstorms, tornadoes, heat waves, hurricanes, tropical storms. Help us to help others, to live like the Good Samaritan with our fellow humans who are hurting and impacted by these kinds of natural events. Ruler God, we pray for our elected officials, the president, vice president, Congress people, mayor, school board members, county officers, 
As we come closer to celebrating Independence Day this week, help us all to come together to bolster this country in the ways we can support one another. Healing God, we pray for the people who need your healing touch in some way. May they feel your presence surrounding them in these times of struggle or pain or grief. We pray especially for Carly and the family of Carol and the family of Marilyn. And we pray for Matt and his health team as they try to treat his disorder. And we pray for Carly and whatever things they can do to help her with this disease. And God, we thank you, giving God, for the ways we see your goodness and faithfulness in our lives, especially like in the life of Rachel, as she's in the hospital for the birth of Catherine. Whether it has happened yet or not, or is still imminent, we pray for her during this time of transition. And for the birth of Fallon and the fact that she gets to be home with her family, her parents, after being in the NICU for a week. Thank you for this great milestone. Guiding God, help us, support us, and lead us, this congregation, to be your hands and feet in this world. May we be the beacon of light upon the hill for the world that needs your light. And as we do, help us to always come back to one another, to be nourished by your spirit and community. We thank you, O oh God, for the gift of prayer, including the Lord's Prayer, which we will now pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. From the beginning of God's relationship with humanity, God has given us everything we need and more. We give back to God through this church community because of our gratitude for the ways God does provide. Let us give with open hearts and minds today.
standing and join me in our unison prayer of dedication. Creator God, use the gifts we provide today to keep the ministry of this congregation alive and well. Help us to accept your gifts and to give of them freely ourselves. We're also a family, a family connected through Christ. We give with this truth ringing joyfully in our ears. Thanks be to Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. And it's now the time where we share our announcements with one another. A big one, of course, is starting next Sunday, church is at 9.30 a.m. So if you come at 10.30, you'll be here for fellowship, but you will have missed You'll have missed the the sermon I'm going to preach on Esau and Jacob, but I know you're just on the edge of your pews to hear what's going on with Esau and Jacob. Um, So yeah, 9.30 next Sunday for all of July and August. Also, during fellowship today, there will not be coffee. For the rest of the summer, we will not have coffee. We'll have other things to drink, of course, but coffee will not be one of them. So be prepared as you walk into the fellowship room. Sorry, there's no coffee. Uh, too hot. Um, yeah, go ahead. There is a beautiful cake, though, today. Talk, from, microphone. Oh. There is a beautiful cake today that Mary Alice provided uh, in celebration of the 4th of July, and we thank Mary Alice for that. And also, there are a few Sundays left in, uh, a couple of Sundays in July and August that we could use some help with refreshments, so please, if you're able, please sign up. We'd appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, that would definitely be helpful. Uh, Also, on the back of the pink flyer, there is a VBS supply list that we would love uh, our church to chip in with. The Methodists have a different list. I made two different lists. So if there are some of these things you are willing to pick up to provide for VBS, that would be great. And if you're like, Pastor Catherine, can I just give you a gift card or some money. That's fine, too. Um, But this is a list of things if you want to pick up some of them. There's lots of things on here, all kinds of random stuff, um, to help make a fun time for the kids, for our VBS, which is the last Monday of July, which I believe is July 29th, yep, through August 2nd. And it'll be at the Methodist Church this year, and it's outer space-themed. I'm pretty excited, and um, yeah, so I wanted to mention that we can start collecting these things, and if you're like, ooh, I really want to get this, don't let anybody else get it, I guess you'll have to tell people. (laughs) I didn't think about doing a giving tree. I could have, but I forgot. So we have this list, and if you know, like, Catherine, I'm going to buy this, feel free to tell me, and I can take it off the list for next week. With that in mind, I think we're ready to continue into our closing hymn which is number 443, O Christ the Great Foundation. Please stand as you are able in body or in spirit.
to go out into the world knowing that God does fulfill God's promises. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Thank you.